Welcome to the revised edition of the North Penn Legal Services Custody and Visitation Video Workshop. The purpose of the video is to provide basic information about how a child custody dispute is handled by the courts or through mediation or negotiation. In the next 30 minutes or so, we will define some of the key legal terms such as legal custody and physical custody. We'll also examine some of the factors parents must consider in deciding whether or not to file a custody lawsuit. We will then look at several common situations involved in child custody. Finally, we will describe what happens once a custody lawsuit is started. Can you file papers without a lawyer? Where do you file your papers? When is the hearing? What happens at the hearing? Who makes the decisions? And of course, no two custody cases are exactly alike, and the law can change. There is no certain way to predict the results of your case. The video is meant to provide basic information that should not be taken as legal advice. We sincerely hope that you and the other persons involved in a child custody dispute are able to reach a fair resolution, which is in the best interest of your child, whether by negotiation, mediation, or a court trial. Many people believe they know a little bit about custody law, and they are quite willing to offer you their opinions. Perhaps your neighbor or cousin has told you that the judge always gives custody to the mother, or fathers always win. Or maybe you were told that a 12-year-old gets to choose where to live. These are examples of street law, which is usually wrong. Every case is different, and what happened to Cousin Jane or your friend Bill might not happen to your case. Let's look at some of the key terms used in custody law. Best interests of the child. This is what judges must determine in making a custody ruling. It represents all the factors a judge must consider when making a decision, including the circumstances and environment of each parent's household, the child's preference, work schedules, and many others. Legal custody. This is the right to be informed about and participate in major decisions affecting the child's physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Most custody orders provide for shared legal custody so that both parents are involved in these major issues. Physical custody. This means the right to have the child without any restrictions or supervision. It can be sole or shared. Sole custody. This means no one else can have the child. Primary custody. This is the right to have the child most of the time. Partial custody. This is the right to have the child some of the time, what most people call visitation. Supervised visitation. This is when a person does not have the right to have the child unless visits are supervised. It is very important to keep these terms in mind as you watch the video, prepare for your hearing, or attempt to carry out the specific terms of an order or agreement. They should also be helpful to you if you and the other party decide to try mediation or to work out your own agreement. Sometimes when parents break up, separate, or divorce, they are able to make their own custody and visitation plans or schedules. They take into account each other's wishes, interests, work schedules, and lifestyles as well as the needs and wishes of the children. They may be able to do this on their own, or they may talk to friends, relatives, religious leaders, counselors, or lawyers in creating a workable plan. Sometimes people agree to submit their problem to a mediator who will set ground rules for discussion and assist them in understanding each person's point of view and coming to a fair agreement. In addition to this video, North Penn Legal Services has produced a separate video on the mediation process. If you think mediation might be helpful, please see the details at the end of this video. If you and the other parent of your child think you can create your own workable plan and do not need a court order, you and the child are indeed fortunate. Good morning. Hello, Mrs. Smith. My name is Ann Targonsky. Have a seat. Thank you. Thanks for seeing me today. 
You're welcome. I understand that you're here. You want to discuss a custody lawsuit? Yes. My husband and I have been separated for seven months. We were arguing all the time, and the kids and I finally moved to my parents' house, and he stayed in New Jersey. Were you and your husband able to work out a custody schedule? Well, we tried, and for a while it worked, but we argued about it a lot. The kids are in a lot of activities, and sometimes they just didn't want to go to New Jersey for the weekend. Have you agreed on a set schedule? We can't. His work keeps changing. Sometimes he wants the kids when I have things scheduled, and then he won't come when he says. Are things getting worse? Much worse. He started threatening to keep the kids, and he found out I was seeing someone, and he's always wanting to bring that up. He's beginning to scare me. If things break down at this point in time, you may need to file a custody lawsuit, something that will tell you both what you can and can't do. A court order will set forth a specific schedule for you to follow. Where can I file a custody lawsuit? In Pennsylvania, all custody lawsuits must be filed in the county courts, which are called the Courts of Common Pleas. Generally, the lawsuit must be filed in the state and county where the child has lived for the last six months, or where an existing custody order was filed, even if that is in another state. There are exceptions to this rule. Mrs. Smith, exactly when did you leave New Jersey? It will be eight months in a week. And have you lived with your parents in this county ever since? No, I, I found a place a couple blocks away after I had been there about a month. Are you sure neither you or your husband have filed for custody either in this county or in New Jersey? No, we've never been separated. We were married for 10 years. Well, how long did you live in New Jersey? It was eight years. All three of our kids were born there. Well, I believe that you can file for custody here. You ha and the children have lived in this county in the Commonwealth for at least six months. How do I file a custody lawsuit? If you are unable to hire an attorney to file a custody lawsuit, you can do it on your own. Many courts have forms available for you to file pro se, which means on your own. Watching this video should be a helpful first step because before you file, you need to know where to file and if you should file. All the forms and instructions you will need are in the packet you obtain. If you cannot afford to pay filing fees, you should file the forms to request the court to let you file without payment of costs or in forma pauperis. Hello, I'm Judge Tina Palachuk Gartley. I am a judge who presides here in Luzerne County. In our county, custody cases are first heard by a hearing officer or master. In Luzerne County, there are two masters who handle nothing but family law proceedings. A master is an attorney who practiced law prior to being appointed by the president judge to handle custody cases. Their purpose is to help the court manage the family court caseload more efficiently. In our family court system, there are two levels of custody litigation. The first level is a hearing in front of a master. The second level is a custody trial in front of a judge of the Court of Common Pleas. The vast majority of our custody cases are resolved at the first level, the master's conference. There are two purposes for the master's conference. The first is to give the parties an opportunity to reach a formal settlement. It may be that the parties have never been able to sit down and discuss their custody issues and come to an agreement that works for everybody. The custody hearing allows that to happen in a safe environment with the master. Sometimes it just helps to have somebody in the room who can talk about the things that, are, that this family is having trouble with. If the parties reach an agreement, the master will put it down on paper in, for, in the form of what we call a stipulated custody order. That agreement is then an enforceable order of court. The second purpose of our master's conference is to expedite the process and to allow parties to get into court earlier. As a matter of scheduling, it is simply faster and more efficient to dispose of custody cases using a master. Our system lets people come to court sooner than they would if we only had custody hearings in front of judges. Now let's talk about how to get to a custody hearing. 
First, every custody hearing is the result of someone filing a complaint for custody or a petition to modify a custody order. A complaint for custody is the document filed in court to start a new custody case. A petition to modify custody is a form that you would file if you wanted to ask the court to change a, an existing custody order. The person who files the document has the obligation to pay the filing fee and is required to send a copy of the papers to the other side. One of the important things about a court proceeding is that everybody has the opportunity to present their side of the story. So if you ask that a custody hearing be scheduled, you must send a copy of the hearing of the notice to the other side so they have an opportunity to come to court at the time and the day the hearing is scheduled. Remember, if you file the paperwork, you must mail it to the opposing party. Everyone will have the opportunity to speak, but only one at a time and in an orderly fashion. The master will let everyone know when it is their turn to speak, so it's very important that you listen during the proceeding. People sometimes ask if they need an attorney for a custody hearing. The simple answer is no, you're not required to have an attorney. In fact, you're probably watching this video because you've decided not to have an attorney. Remember, it is your choice whether to have an attorney with you. People have many questions about custody law. For example, what will happen during a custody proceeding or what information is most important to present to the court? A lawyer can help you by explaining these things. But as I said before, you are not required to have an attorney.